Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I would like first to thank Medifacos, especially Marcelo, for inviting me for this uh, symposium, symposium. And uh, today I will share with you my experience with SI5 and 6. So corneal remodeling using keratin is today a confirmed treatment of non-complicated keratoconus. Basically, we have two models of keratin, five and six millimeters with different uh, thing, uh, thickness and arc length. Everybody knows today that the general mechanism of action is corneal uh, flattening and with thicker segment and smaller diameter we have bigger effect. With shorter uh, segment we have bigger astigmatism correction and with the longer one we have bigger spherical correction. Despite this general knowledge, the exact topographic effects of all these ring models are still not well defined. For uh, two years, I've been focusing on the action mode of different model of Kera ring, and for this purpose, we perform a study of 420 eyes in which we analyze the action mode of each ring model using the topographic and elevation differential maps. And the important thing that we, we find out is that after observation of the topographic differential maps, we have noticed that the corneal flattening profile of each model is almost always reproductible and dependently from the ectasia shape. But the nuance is that the refractive value, the refractive amount of flattening is different and it depends on corneal biomechanics of each cornea, of course. You have here three differential maps treated with SI5. We have two rings here, one ring and one ring, and you can observe that the flattening profile is reproductible but maybe the, the amount, the value of, of flattening is, is different from case to case. You have here three differential maps treated with SI6, two rings, one ring here and one ring, and you can observe that uh, flattening profile is reproductible. I will show you now a short video showing you a theoretical effect of SI5 and SI6 on spherical cornea. You have here a theoretical effect of SI6 and we can observe that we have two flattening spots here and here in the extremes of uh, the ring and in the area in between, that means the opposite axis, we have a slight steepening. And this can explain very well the strong astigmatism effect of SI6 and the reduced spherical one. Whereas with SI5, we have central flattening and peripheral flattening. The peripheric flattening is uh, bigger than the central flattening, and that can explain the simultaneous effect of on sphere and cylinder with SI5. Now, the effect with different arc length, you can see that with SI5 uh, 210 micron, we have a big surface, a large surface of flattening. That's why we have a big spherical effect. And you can observe that when we decrease the arc length of uh, the ring, the, 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 the flattening surface decreases, but we observe some uh, astigmatism uh, effect. And you can see here, for example, with 90 degrees, we have a flattening in this axis and the steepening in the opposite axis, and this explains the uh, cylindrical effect of the short ring. Now, what about the refractive uh, result regarding corneal flattening? We have with SI5 4.2 diopter, with SI6 just 2 diopter, but with astigmatism correction, we have more astigmatism correction with 6 millimeter ring compared to five millimeter ring for diopter. So we can conclude that SI6 
provide us less central flattening and more astigmatism correction, and with SI5, more central flattening and less astigmatism correction compared to SI6. Now, in practice, our choice criteria of SI5 and 6 depend on distribution of keratometry, the shape, and the surface of ectasia. When you have like this topographic uh, example, it's an early stage of keratoconus when the central keratometry is less than 52 diopter. In this case, we don't need to, uh, to have a central flattening, but the desired effect is to treat an irregular astigmatism. So the ideal profile will be SI6 in these cases. When we have an advanced stage of keratogenes, like this example of topography, here we have a large surface of ectasia which reach the center of the cornea, and here the desired effect is a central corneal flattening and astigmatism correction. So in here the only choice will be SI5, which is the ideal profile here. Everybody knows that the good prognosis factor is keratometry, pachymetry, and best corrected visual acuity. But I believe today that there is another prognosis factor which is very, very important, who is ectasia shape. Because we know today that the results depend on ectasia shape, and the ideal today is to have the perfect matching between the flattening profile of the ring and the ectasia shape. This, this is an example of a PMD with five diopter of cylinder. We have here the flattening profile of a, a Kera ring, and we can observe here that with this flattening profile of the SI6 ring, we will have a perfect matching with this uh, ectasia, and we have a perfect congruence between the ring and the ectasia. So in this case, we can predict that we will have a very, very good result. This is the post-op topography, which is very nice, and we have a best corrected visual, a post-op best corrected visual acuity 10 over 10. Some uh, examples. Remember that the Kera ring is an adjustable technique. This is an example of central keratoconus with minus two cylinder minus three of a sphere. We put here one SI6, and you can observe here a very poor flattening uh, of the center with SI6. So we decide after one year to replace this SI6 by another uh, one, which is SI5, and you can see that we have a better central flattening. An example with SI6, which is which uh, make a very uh, strong astigmatism uh, effect, which is frequent uh, with uh, two rings. We have here an example with six diopter of cylinder. We put two ring. 2 SI6, 300 micron, 200 micron, and we have an overcorrection after one year, 6.5 diopter in the opposite axis. That means that the ring treated 12 diopter of cylinder. So we decide to remove one ring, and the final topography, one diopter of cylinder. Another example of uh, advanced stage of keratoconus stage three, big surface of ectasia which reach the center. And here, as we, as we said, the only cho choice is SI5 profile. And this is the post-op topography. The last example, keratoconus stage two. Here we have an irregular astigmatism. The ectasia didn't, doesn't reach the center, so here we need just a uh, peripheral flattening, so the ideal profile will be the SI6, okay. post-op topography. I would like to <laughs> speak about a new project, which uh, is a ring simulator. You can, this, yeah, this, we are like three minutes late, but. Okay, uh, I, yeah. I will conclude. Yeah. 
uh, this project is in process. It's a software of corneal topography using a database of topographic action of each keraring model, which uh, will simulate a real keraring treatment. This is the, the, the basis of this uh, ring simulator, which simulate the action in uh, the case of a keratoconus of SI5 and at uh, SI6, so we can compare the action of uh, both rings so we can make a better choice. This is the interface of uh, the, the, the software, pre-op topography, simulated topography. We can put one ring or two ring. We chose the diameter, the, the thickness, and the, the arc length. In uh, conclusion, SI5 and 6 offer a large range of treatments. It's different philosophy of corneal remodeling, SI5 for more flattening, SI6 for more astigmatism uh, correction. Today we have a multitude of form of keratoconus. No one looks like the other. After having studied and filed the different corneal effects of the different keratoconus models, it will now become easier to adapt to each keratoconus form the ideal ring profile. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carmen.